Let's go to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. As we look at verses 9 and 10, the word of God says, And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are falling down. But we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down. But we will change them into cedars. I want to talk for just a few moments tonight about rebuilding with the right stuff. Look at somebody and tell them tonight, rebuilding Yay. with the right stuff. <laughs> now, listen, people of God, throughout the long reign of Jeroboam II, the northern kingdom had enjoyed great prosperity. These were some blessed people in the northern kingdom. Blessings were just flowing their way. Great prosperity followed them. But now, the Bible says, that Assyria rose up and almost wiped them out. These blessed people, these prosperous people, and now the enemy comes and almost wipes them totally out. They lost just about everything they own. And there's somebody in here tonight who can relate. <laughs> but listen, people, I think that we will, we will all agree that in the face of such an experience, it was true pride for Israel. It was true pride for Ephraim. It was true pride for Samaria to be able to say, don't worry, the bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with hewn stone. The sycamore trees have been cut down, but we will rebuild them with something better called cedar trees. Now, I don't care what you say tonight. We must admire these people because of their determination because of their desire to rebuild because if you will note here there is a great element of faith we will rebuild we got to rebuild we've got to show the enemy that the enemy cannot defeat us because after all these were God's chosen people these weren't just any people. These were, these were God's chosen people. These were people that had the blessing of God on their lives. So if anybody ought to be saying, we will rebuild and we will rebuild better, it should have been the people of God. But I want you to note tonight that in the midst of of their positiveness in the midst of all of their hopes in the midst of all of their dreams to rebuild here comes an unpopular prophet by the name of Isaiah and what does this prophet do amid all of the positiveness? This prophet announces calamity. And he says, 
you will never rebuild again. Prophet Isaiah, how could you say something like that? When you know what we've been through, how could you proclaim to be the prophet of God when you, when you know that the enemy has attacked us and now you tell us that we will never rebuild again? There had to be a problem. And so tonight, I want to deal with the problem because there needs to be some rebuilding in the city of New Orleans. And so I don't want you to make the same mistake as Ephraim made. I, I, I don't want you to make the same mistake as Samaria made because I just believe that we're supposed to profit by our mistakes. So the first thing that we understand clearly, we are not the only people who have had to rebuild. Because there is nothing new under the sun. What, what was the problem? What, what was the problem? Well, the basis of this judgment was quite simple. The bricks, the prophet said was not from the violence of the assault. That's not why the buildings fell. It was not because of the assault. But he said the bricks fell from the weakness of the builders. Not... <laughs> Not the assault, but the builders. Now, now, as you, as, as, as you look, even in our situation, if, if you really get down to it, and I've been telling people, New Orleans is different, even from Mississippi, even from Alabama, because hurricanes hit all of us, but New Orleans fell, not because of Katrina. but because of the builders who, who took lightly the levees, who, who was not concerned enough to invest in somebody's life. We can put money somewhere else. We can make a difference somewhere else. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't Katrina. In fact, Katrina was over. But but the weakness of the builders. Now, I don't want you to stop there though because when I talk about the levy builders, amen, amen, amen. But, but, there's some other builders. Some other builders who are called by my name. The prophet Isaiah talks to the people of God. He talks to Israel. He talks to Samaria. He talks to Ephraim to say, don't you blame it on the enemy. It's the weakness of the builders. You know what he was saying? He was saying, it's not the bricks but it's the stuff in between the bricks. You see, the cause which made the disaster so bad was the nation's moral cement. And you know what our problem is today? There were so many people in this world, we think that we can do anything we want to do, set any kind of rules that we want to set that is against God's rule and think that the world is going to stand. But how many of you know you can make all of the laws that you want? Oh, when God gets ready... 
you got to move you, you can say I'm not going to move on this I'm not going to move on that because you're so intelligent and you're so smart but when God gets ready you have to move and so the moral cement this is what the prophet says the prophet says that's where the problem really is not not the bricks but the moral cement and look around us look at the moral cement of our city of our nation you can't even turn on television anymore at least you could turn on ABC and NBC and there would be no cursing or there would be no kind of illicit sex but now everything is is happening because the moral fiber of our nation has has gone down because everybody has concluded that everybody's doing it and so because we are who we are and we are America and we can do anything that we want to do the moral cement has turned into sand. It's bad when spiritual cement turns into sand. Mm. I'm talking about it was a time that the spiritual was, was so strong there were people who were saying that I let nothing separate me from the love of God. It was in their hearts. They believed it. They was going to stand no matter who liked it, who did like it in fact the bible says that we are peculiar people but not many people want to be peculiar anymore not many people want to be strange anymore we want to be in the in crowd we want everybody to like us so the best thing to do is keep our mouths shut when the bible says if it's wrong cry loud spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion show the people their transgression if they like you it's all right if they don't like you it's all right if they don't want to call you anymore it's all right as long as I make a stand for God God, that's what God desires of me. But our spiritual cement has turned into sand. But how many of you know tonight, I don't care how strong you are, I don't care how big you are, you cannot rebuild without God. I don't care how good your bricks are. I don't care how good your stones are. I don't care what you think you have that's good that you can rebuild with. You cannot rebuild without God. Let me tell you what we have here. We have here beautiful words. But they are expressing nothing more than a wicked thought on the part of Ephraim and Samaria. It looks good on paper, doesn't it? We will rebuild. Our bricks have been torn down, but we're going to rebuild with something better. Hewn stones. It sounds good. Enemy, you mess with our sycamore trees, but we will rebuild. With cedar trees, it, it sounds good because noble mottos may be written on unworthy banners. Mm, preach, Bishop. Religious words may be pronounced by irreligious lips. Everybody that is talking about God don't mean. Everybody that's lifting their hands and praising the name of the Lord don't mean it because when the storms of life come, there are people that forget that if it wasn't for the grace of God, you would not be here tonight. I'm, I'm here to tell you, you're going to have to understand this, people of God. If it was not for His grace, 
how soon people forget about the grace of God how soon people forget how good God has been to us you see we must always look hear me good people of God we must always look at the surroundings of a circumstance in order to understand its full value don't just go on what you hear look at the circumstance look at the situation and sometimes you have to ask the hard questions why why have we gone through what we've gone through why why has it been so rough on us and so this was a beautiful song what what language could be more beautiful yet through the beautiful speech of Ephraim through through the beautiful speech of the inhabitants of Samaria it indicated this is what was happening if you look at the circumstances it looked or rather indicated their ambitious purpose to go against God Here were people who were saying, in effect, God can't tell us what to do. He don't run me. I'm an old man. That old preacher with his short self can't tell me what to do. I want you to look, people of God, you got to look at this situation because right here you will understand that they decided that we're going to go against God. God had told them, if you don't straighten up, I'm going to destroy you. If you don't straighten up, I'm going to let the enemy come in and attack you. And these people still with their wicked ways, they wanted to do what they wanted to do. They wanted to go where they wanted to go. They wanted to have what they wanted to have that was totally against God. And now that their buildings are down, now that their trees are down, they still look at God and say, we will rebuild. You got to understand got to understand because this is a this is a prophetic word and th 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 there are many here tonight and that's why I want you to be able to get your life together for the new year because I am here to tell somebody tonight that you are trying to rebuild with the wrong stuff and if you're building or rebuilding with the wrong stuff what we have gone through before we'll go through it again unless people begin to recognize that God is God I don't care how many rules you make I don't care how many laws you make somebody's got to come back to God and somebody's got to cry loud and somebody's got to know that playtime is over When have you ever seen so many hurricanes? 27 storms broke a record in 2005. Went through the alphabet. And now going through the Greek alphabet. Because the storms were supposed to end last month. But God is saying, you don't tell me when I end the storm. Because unless you begin to control the storm of your life, I'll show you and I love you so much that I'll set you up to bring a people back to me. Some of y'all don't even know what your assignment is in the city of New Orleans. Some of you don't know what your assignment is. Your assignment is to bring America back to God. 
You may not want to shout about it, but that's your assignment. Your assignment is to bring America back to God that we went through, but God brought us out. And you got to be a living testimony, not on your education, not on how good you are, not on how wonderful you are, but somebody's got to let somebody know that if it wasn't for the grace see it tonight people of God you got to you got to see it tonight because there's a lot of people building with the wrong stuff it's like placing a brick on a brick with nothing in between That's how, that's how our people, that's how they're trying to rebuild. A brick on a brick, but nothing in between. <laughs> you can put a brick on top of a brick, and it can look like it's strong because they're bricks. But if there is nothing, in between when the storm comes it will blow your house down when the storm comes it will make you lose everything that you have so I've come to prophesy into somebody's life tonight as you begin to rebuild your life as you begin to rebuild your home as you begin to rebuild your property as you begin to rebuild everything that God has given to you what about the stuff in between What's going to be, <laughs> what's going to be in between your bed bricks? Is it going to be your education between your bricks? Is it going to be your fine job in between your bricks? You had that and you lost it. Is it going to be your fine car between your bricks? Or am I going to put the power of God in between my bricks so no matter what comes, no matter what goes, I'm going to still stand? That's why I'm able to stand, baby. The reason why I'm preaching tonight is because I got something between my bricks. is strong but let me tell you the only reason that I'm strong is because I got the power of God between my bricks I thank God for my education I thank God for my family I thank God for my things but all of my things I've got so take it lightly take it lightly if you want but as you enter a new year what's between your bricks you see in the text there was no there was no mortar in in the text there was no 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 cement bricks are strong but without cement you have nothing mm. and you know what's missing today the cement because a lot of people don't want to use the cement. You know why they don't want to use the cement? Because it's too expensive. Sometimes you got to give up some friends. It's too expensive. Sometimes you got to give up some stuff that you don't want to give up. It's too expensive. I'd rather, I'd rather hold on to what I want to hold on to. But I've come to speak into somebody's life because I'm showing you how to rebuild with the right stuff. You talk about a powerful year. If you hear me tonight, if you hear this prophetic word tonight, something good is about to happen in your life. Listen, people of God. Please understand, you want to rebuild your life, but if you're trying to do it without the power of God, you see, you can't do it without the power of God. You can rebuild, but if God doesn't put it together, it won't last. If God 
don't put it together, it won't last. Bishop, how do you have so many people back now at the church when pastors all across the country saying, I don't know what to do. I'm ready to give up. You know why we're here tonight? It's because we got the right cement. Because before the storm came, I let somebody know you better put your trust in Jesus. You better trust him because no matter what you have, you can have it today and it will be gone tomorrow. But I'm here to tell you, yes, I lost just like you lost. But there's one thing I want to tell you. I never lost my joy through the storm. I didn't lose my joy through the storm because I had the right cement. Touch somebody, ask them, do you have the right cement? See. The power of God that breaks every yoke. The power of God. When things look bad in your life, you gotta ask yourself the question: Do I have the right? If you got the right stuff, God will lead you. He'll direct you. See, he won't let you stop. He, he may send you somewhere else, but he won't let you stop. Because, because it has to be, it has to be the right stuff you can rebuild. But if God doesn't put it together, it won't last. The prophet said, you will never rebuild successfully on what you're saying. We will rebuild. But he said, you won't. You won't do it that way simply because you're leaving God out. And I come to speak to the city of New Orleans. If you think that New Orleans is going to be rebuilt on Mardi Gras, shame on you. If you think that it's going to be rebuilt with the casinos, shame on you. Katrina means a purging. Katrina means a cleansing. God said, I am trying to take you to the next level. It's got to be me. And if I'm not first in your life, I'll bring a greater than Katrina to you. Somebody tonight, sit down. I'm almost through. You see... Crime is down. But if you don't rebuild with the right cement, crime's going to go right back up. If my people who were called by my men would just humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then somebody said bishop you back in New Orleans why did you go back to New Orleans because uh, I mean it's just so difficult to rebuild I am here and understand me clearly you don't have to give me no credit but I am here to save the city of New Orleans because I got the right and I I am here to tell you people of God until we begin to realize that it's going to be God's people. You can form all the committees that you want. 
and you don't even have to put me on any committee but let me tell you when it's all over if New Orleans is going to be rebuilt if my people any, 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 any of God's people in this place tonight any of God's people in this place tonight you see one more thing our nation wants to rebuild but it has so little faith in God's living word a lot of folk don't believe that God is real a lot of people don't believe that he's the answer they are skeptical of the power of spiritual principles they leave God out of the process that preacher just telling y'all stuff but I'm not telling you stuff I'm going by the word of God tonight to show you how to rebuild because the problem is not the brick the problem is not the stone but it's the mortar it's the cement between everything you do did y'all hear me everything you do you're gonna have to put them in it i don't care if it's in your marriage you're gonna have to put them in it i don't care if it's with your children you're gonna have to put them in it i don't care if it's in the school system you're gonna have to put them in it i don't care if it relates to your job you're gonna have to put them in it he is sick of being on the back and he is saying i want to take the forefront and you gotta know who i am just touch somebody tell them put him in it put him in it you gotta put him in it because this is the year that you're going to put him in it don't forget the cement Don't forget the cement. What are you saying? Don't forget the power of God. I don't want you to think that you can do it by yourself. Don't forget the cement. You can speak it tonight. I speak it in my life. That everything that I need to be fixed will be fixed in 2006. But the only way it's going to be fixed, you've got to have the right seat. Can I preach in this place? I feel like preaching. Don't forget the cement. Don't forget the power. But I'm looking for somebody who will cry out and spare not when they see you rebuilding your life, when they see you rebuilding your home. You gotta go tell somebody it's because of God, not FEMA. God will speak to FEMA, but it's not FEMA. It's not the Red Cross. God will speak to the Red Cross. It's not Congress. God will speak to Congress. But you got to begin to thank Him for being good to you. Is there anybody you know that He's been good to you? Now, I don't want you to leave here and let your cement turn into sand because depression will turn your cement into sand complaining will turn your cement into sand but I don't care what you're going through begin to praise begin to shout begin to lift your hands because talking to myself but I high five somebody tell them I got the right stuff to rebuild I got the right stuff to rebuild you better look out 
church in the new year because I got the right stuff to rebuild for the Bible says in all thy ways acknowledge him he will direct your path he'll tell you what to tell the insurance company he'll tell you what to tell FEMA he'll tell you what to tell your employer because I got the right stuff don't wait till the battle is over so now so now God is getting ready to work a miracle He's getting ready to show up because the greater the storm, the greater the blessing, the greater the storm, the greater the blessing. You need to let somebody know I'm in store for a great blessing. Greatest disaster means greatest blessings. He said he allowed to happen the greatest disaster but I got the greatest testimony look what prayed here but I want the people of God to cry loud and if they don't listen we can speak a word and let them know do you want the same thing to happen that happened before because playtime is over look at somebody playtime is over is there anybody is there anybody you're glad about it they gonna have to know that you're God's child they're gonna have to know that we're God's people and we decided to let nothing separate us from the love of God yes yes we will rebuild we'll rebuild our houses we will rebuild we'll rebuild our jobs we will rebuild we'll rebuild our communities but there's one thing I want you to know we're going to rebuild with Jesus first won't he be there I know he will I know he will oh he will if anyone should ever write my life story For whatever reason, there may be, you'll be there. Through every line of pain and glory. How many of you know Jesus is the best thing? All about Sunday. He's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Listen. I've had my share Life's little ups and downs Fate has been kind And the downs 
If in you 